Welcome back guys, this week's Space News starting with Japanese capsule carrying asteroid samples returns back to Earth. SpaceX completed the 21st carbon mission to the International Space Center with Christmas gifts. SpaceX completed its SNA prototype test. Agnipul to partner with DOS. Pixel to launch from India. Astronauts harvest in space. Changi's Pi mission. And at last, a company wants to send satellites from drones. This is Lighted Sky. Let's get started. First news, Japanese capsule carrying asteroid sample return back to Earth. This is the second time in the human history to win back an asteroid sample back to Earth. As the first one was in 2010 when Hayabusa mission visited this asteroid. In 2014, the Hayabusa 2 mission was launched and it was meant to study a near-Earth asteroid known as Ryugu which is a 900 meter wide asteroid and a C-type asteroid. The spacecraft studied this asteroid from June of 2018 to November of 2019. During its study, it observed the asteroid in great detail and also deployed many of its mini probes on the surface of the asteroid and also several other tiny hopping rovers and a microwave sized lander which was also called as MOSCOT nothing but mobile asteroid surface scout After studying the asteroid, it, it was meant to return to Earth by carrying the samples it had collected It was returned to Earth on 5th December in Australia. I mean the capsule landed in Australia. So why is it that important to bring back this asteroid sample back to Earth? The reason is that the materials which form the Earth's ocean and life were part of the primordial cloud which formed the entire solar system. In the early solar system, these materials were in contact and interacting with each other. So these reactions or interaction is still present in the primitive bodies or the sea type asteroids. Hence, studying about them could give us a key insight about the origin and evolution of the solar system. The main spacecraft, Hayabusa 2, after delivering the capsule back to Earth, conducted another engine burn to head away from the Earth because picture abhi baki hai. This means that JAXA agreed to extend the mission of the Hayabusa 2 and now it has to study two other asteroids coming in the year 2026 and 2031. Second news, SpaceX completed its cargo mission with Christmas gifts. The company launched its 21st cargo mission to the International Space Station, but this time with a new and bigger Dragon capsule. The supplies weighing 2,900 kgs had Christmas gifts and other scientific instruments with billions of microbes and crushed samples of asteroids. This marked the very first time that the company's two Dragon capsules were in space at the same time docked to the International Space Station. The company is aiming to put at least one Dragon capsule up in the sky when the other is back on Earth. The new capsule can not only do the autonomous docking to the International Space Center but also has the 20% more cargo capacity. Also on board the Dragon CR-21 spacecraft is a new airlock for the International Space Station. The NanoRax Bishop airlock will be the first commercial airlock at the orbital outpost and astronauts will use it to transport science payloads to and from outside of the space station. And because it was the last cargo launch of the year, NASA added some holiday goodies for the astronauts including cherry blueberry, cobbler, roasted turkey, marconi and cheese, potatoes, ogatin, corn, green beans and shortbread cookies with sparkle gel for decorating. Third news, radishes grown in space. Astronauts harvested fresh radishes on the International Space Station and NASA astronaut and flight engineer Kate Rubin pulled out 20 of them from the advanced plant habitat. She then pulled them and kept them in the cold storage so that they can be return to Earth the next year. On the other hand, back on Earth, scientists in the Kennedy Space Center have also been growing the radishes and which are to be harvested on the coming of the 15th December so that they can compare which the radishes which, is, which were grown on space and back on Earth so that they can get a clear estimate about the mineral and other nutrient changes and the space effects on growing such plants. 
radishes have short cultivation time so this gives an advantage of that for future deep space missions this can be a potential source of food also these root vegetables do not require much maintenance from the crew this is not the first time that nasa is trying to harvest something in space as they have already grown at least 15 types of plants and 8 types of green leaves also they are testing 100 types 100 different types of crops back on earth so that to choose which one will go to space the next time radishes are the latest type of fresh produce to be successfully grown and harvested in zero gravity joining outrageous red romaine lettuce green lettuce chinese cabbage lentils and mustard getting humans to mars and back safely over a two or three year mission requires growing food along the way that not only gives astronauts more of a vibrant supply of fresh nutrients on the voyage it also serves an emotional need as they tend to crops that are both a figurative and literal taste of the home fourth news pixel to launch from india and agnikul partners with divers the bengaluru based startup company pixel is set to launch its first earth observation satellite aboard the PSLV rocket. The company plans to build the first Indian private Earth observation satellite constellation with around 30 satellites. And it, it is trying to accomplish this goal by mid-2023. The company had planned earlier to send its first satellite on, on top of the Russian Soyuz rocket, but due to time delays, the timeline was pushed down to end of this year and again being delayed. The Pixel again signed with ISRO as because ISRO provided them with an earlier launch opportunity. This is the second partnership for the ISRO after the formation of Inspire-E, a nodal agency under the Department of Space as the first deal was signed by the Agnipo. ISRO chairman Dr. K. Svan said that the agency is keen in supporting Indian private organizations or companies to take up space activities and also they want them to become the global leaders. Agnikul is involved in building India's private small satellite launch vehicle. Their core product, Agniban, is designed to carry up to 100 kg of payloads to low earth orbits of up to 700 km within a plug-and-play engine configuration. Agnikul will be working with various ISRO centers and will get access to technical information and facilities necessary to go forward with their launch vehicle development. This, it will also enable the DOS to mentor the private players and help them collaborate with the Indian Space Agency. Fifth news, this is my complete favorite one, SN8 prototype test. SpaceX completed its uh, SN8 prototype test on 10 December at around 4.30 am in the morning. The mission was a complete failure for some audience but a complete success for the team and its fans. The milestones achieved in the test were all positive like it achieved the 12.5 km altitude and also it did some complex maneuvering such as the belly flop but during landing this happened so the reason for that is the fuel header tank pressure was low and which caused the uh, down velocity to be high that is the landing velocity to be high and so the SM9 prototype test is coming soon and uh, and this is a whole new good news for all the fans because um, Starship was a key Starship success is a key has it, it will define the interplanetary traveling and also the mission to Mars which Elon Musk is dreaming of also Elon Musk tweeted Mars we are coming and also he congratulated his entire team and said hell yeah sixth news Changi is 5 mission Changi 5 mission is a lunar sample return mission which was launched last month that is on 23rd November. It has already reached moon and has scooped materials from the surface of the moon and the module containing uh, the soil and the rocks have been lifted off from the moon's orbit and are scheduled to return to earth on December of 16 or 17 in inner, inner Mongolia. Before liftoff from the lunar surface, the Chinese unfurled their national flag and it became the second country in the whole world to raise its flag after the USA which did the same task like 50 years ago. And also this marks the very first time that the Chinese have achieved a liftoff from an extraterrestrial surface. If the mission is a successful, if, if they get back the samples, then China will join or it will become the third country 
the whole world after USA and Russia to retrieve lunar samples. Scientists hope the samples will help them learn about the moon's origins, formation and volcanic activity on its surface. The soil and rock samples obtained from the moon by the Chinese spacecraft are expected to provide information about the moon's origin, geological evolution, lunar volcanic activity and also offer insights into solar activities in the universe, according to the mission team. The space probe is expected to land in Inner Mongolia on December 16. From there, the samples will be transported to a specialized labs for analysis. Seventh news, launching satellites from drones. Space logistics company Avum has developed a new drone called as Ravenex and which hopes to send rockets to low Earth orbit in every three hours. Founded in 2016, the company had kept the project in stealth and on December 3rd, 2020, they unveiled their project. Raven X is a 80 foot long drone. After takeoff, it reaches to 30 to 60,000 feet and where the rockets separate and ignites, launching the payloads into the orbit. Also, the company has yet to perform any test flights and it is still required to have the airworthiness certificate. Ravenex can take off and land horizontally on any airstrip at least one mile long. Ravenex's first mission will be the Aslan 45 mission for the US Space Force, a $5 million contract. With that mission, the focus is on showing how the company can get a payload into orbit in 24 hours or less. That launch is expected to be completed before the end of 2021. That's the end of this week's Space News. Let me know in the comment section which news you liked. And if you are not subscribed till now, please consider subscribing. Thank you for staying till the end. Meet you guys in the next week. Until then, keep learning and keep enjoying. Thank you. Don't forget to watch my other videos.